Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Refund Horizons doing another Field Survey Friday video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we structure field drawings here at Refund Horizons. We've got another video that explains what a field drawing is. Watch that if you haven't yet. This video will make more sense if you do that. So we're going to start by talking about what kind of what layers do we put into a field drawing. This could apply to GIS, but we're, we're we do it here. We do it in CAD, but you could certainly no reason why you couldn't do it in GIS. So what are our, our thematic layers in our field drawing? We have a layer for control. So that's where our control points go. We have valid control, control that's been destroyed, and then proposed control. Might not need proposed control on smart small projects, but I talked to a friend of mine. He's surveying 13 miles of pipeline right now. And in, in a situation like that, I certainly, as the LS, would want to do some planning about where my primary control would be. So you might show proposed control in there, and then you can use your field drawing to track as that control gets set and established. Uh, I usually like to put in my overall mapping limits. So overall mapping limits, you can have one mapping limit for each task, or maybe you just have your overall scope mapping limit. Um, that's something, you know, it's going to depend a little bit on the job. And then I like to show the limits of each field survey. So as the guys go out and they take down different chunks of the work, I try and do that, try and show a geographic footprint. You can't always do that if you got a field crew running all over the job. That, that might be difficult. But most of the time, especially if you're doing a mapping project, not a construction project, you can show the progression of the field surveys with the geographic footprint. Then we've got a layer where we just kind of cloud oddball stuff that came up. You know, I mentioned in the last video you got a, a semi-truck parked on a manhole or the crew finds a, a manhole with no pipes in it, or, you know, we find all kinds of crazy stuff that you get in the field drawing. And then just notes, just multi-liter notes of, of interesting or odd or funny stuff that the crew's found or that you want, you know, if you're processing data, you want the next person to be aware, hey, you know, we set this control point. We normally, we normally set a, a mag nail or a rebar and cap, and this was an ink X, whatever. So just, Notes, you leave notes behind so people can kind of retrace your, your field work. So those are kind of the thematic layers. Now I want to talk about, uh, some other, some other stuff, some other structure. So I want to talk about the, the tabular data or the attribute data that should go in your GIS and then we'll talk about the layouts. Okay. So this is tabular data. So right now at Redefine Horizons, we've got this just set up as tables in our field drawing, but it could be an attribute table in something like QGIS or ArcGIS. So what kind of tabular data do you want? Um, I like to have a control table with information on every control point, you know, coordinate, any issues, good description, how it was set, you know, is it primary, is it secondary? Then I like to have a table on the field survey, so just give me some information about every field survey, when it was done, who the party chief was, where the field notes are, what the purpose of the survey was, any interesting things that came up in the field survey. Um, then I like to have, uh, usually have some, some notes on raw data review. Okay, and you could structure that in a table if you wanted. Who did it? What were they doing? What step did they take? What action did they take? Raw data review. And then I usually have some information about our coordinate reference system, map projection, date and scale factors. Okay. And, uh, control general control notes, you know, what methods did we use for primary control, secondary control. Okay. This might not be tabular, this just might be some standard notes. And then over here, every field drawing gets a standard set of layouts. Okay, so I want to talk about what those layouts are. So we've got the main map view. And that could be more than one sheet, depending on how big the job is and the scale that we're at. But there's a set of main map views or main map sheets. Okay, and those always show a couple things. They show valid existing control. And they show the mapping limits. So both the, the scope mapping limits and the mapping limits of individual field surveys. And then we usually leave our oddball, oddball stuff note layer on. And the idea there is you want to be able to PDF those sheets, map sheets, and give somebody a geographic overview of any, any important issues that came up with the field work. So you've got your map views, and then we have our table views. 
Okay, which are just layouts for the tables. So you can PDF the tables, control table, field survey table, raw data review. Okay, and then any note layouts. So we'd have a note layout for the CRS control notes. And this is should be just kind of a summary of the information that's already going into your survey report. Okay, so that's how we structure a drawing. I know this sounds like a lot of work, but it's not. Once you get a template in place and train your people to update it after every field survey, that should be part of your field survey review process, which I know you have. You have a process to do that. You also review all your raw data, I know, because you're a good surveyor. I know it seems like a lot of work. It's not if you have a good process and a good template. I will tell you, as a young surveyor, I did huge surveys first. Now I do mostly smaller surveys, but I learned. I went to work for a firm that did a bunch of big public works surveys. If you are doing a big survey with multiple crews and a lot of moving parts, you are going to get burned if you don't have a system like this. Learn to practice the system on small projects so that when you receive responsibility for larger projects, you already know what you're doing. Do not attempt large-scale field surveys without some kind of system like this, either a GIS or drawing, where you can track your progress. That's the point. I'm going to try and do some more uh, videos. Uh, maybe I'll get on the desktop and we'll do some videos and actually show you some some live field field drawings, but I wanted to introduce you to the introduce you guys to the concept. I know there's some folks at District Four Caltrans that are that have a system some somewhat like this. I know the gentlemen down at uh, Turlock Irrigation District are using Google Earth, kind of using Google Earth to do something like this. So there's different there's all kinds of different ways to do it. But I wanted to get you guys introduced to you and get you introduced to the concept. And definitely, if you have feedback or examples of how you manage your field work, if you're using some kind of field drawing and you'd like to tell me about it or some of your examples, I'd appreciate that. Thank you for watching Field Survey Friday video. Appreciate it.